Uh, Tommy Kyle, welcome to the Grapple Theory Podcast. Um, for anyone watching, it's your first time on. For you, it's actually your second time on, because we had issues recording the last time, and so you're back here again. We're here again. I loved it so much the first time I had to come back. Exactly. It was too much for one interview that my, my computer crashed, and so we've had to do it all over again. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's lovely to have you back on. Um, for anyone, obviously, well, no one saw the first time we recorded, but we chatted about, like, the year you've had uh, and the fact that you mentioned a lot that how it's sort of been a, a very growing year for you and you, you feel like you're getting more out there um, as a wrestler. Um, and I just wanted to sort of go back to that and think like, is that something, I mean, obviously it's something you were hoping for when 2022 started, but were you sort of uh, impressed or, you know, in yourself in terms of, in terms of how much you actually achieved last year? Well, this year still. Um, yeah no like it's um it's it's always good like it's been uh i i think like the amount of promotion sort of in the south has been like really nice because like every, sort of apart from the the real big ones like progress and rev pros and things like that um i've more or less ticked off all the ones that i wanted to do down this way like mm-hmm. there's still the north and, and the wales scene that i really want to do and that's a 2023 goal is to do that but to just get in more promotions down this way um uh, was a success so yeah to, uh, and to have them in like the volume and the variety of them mm. uh, was really good so that was um, a nice but welcome surprise yeah yeah and we talk about 2023 goals something we didn't mention uh, last time in the chat is the fact that your, your 2023 is getting off to a, a pretty hefty start at Wrestle Carnival uh, against Chris Ridgway for the Pure Championship yeah that's absolutely. that's going to be a hell of a match I mean how much are you looking forward to that one um, yeah, it'll be exciting. Um, Chris is obviously like uh, the, definitely the best pure wrestler in the world, and probably one of the best wrestlers in the world. So uh, it would be silly of me not to be excited for the opportunity. But it's also a big test to see if I can um, sort of hang at that level, which I think mm-hmm. I can. Um, and yeah, the, for the pure title it was a nice uh, thing on top as well, which hopefully all being well and the game plan goes to plan then we'll walk away with it on January 29th hopefully so fingers crossed fingers crossed we've got to back you because Chris hasn't been on the podcast yet and so we can't back him really we've got to back you instead (laughs) I mean and what what about the fact that it's sort of pure wrestling what is your view I know that like especially in the scene at the minute the current like climate in terms of fan base there's there's a lot of like sort of back and forth on pure wrestling and, and what it is and you know there's it's like Marmite isn't it I think pure wrestling I think it's very Marmite in terms of you either love it or you hate it I think it's a I think it's a wrestling fans um, like deep wrestling fan style so I think the people who watch like a lot of different wrestling from different places like pure wrestling mm. I don't know um how much it translates to the casual fan, but wrestling's a variety show at the end of the day. So, like, if you're going to have a comedy match on uh, a card, then a then a pure match belongs just as much um, as as much as like a, a rounds match, for instance, would, mm. would, would belong. It's all different variety, and then you've got like you know ladders and hardcore and gimmicks and everything. It's all a variety show. So, if there's a card of six matches and there's something every something like slightly different for each match, mm. and say one match is pure. With that, those slight little stipulations, then you've achieved the variety in your show. I was going to say because you are quite a variety wrestler in the fact that, like, in, in terms of this year and now with with this pure match, it seems like you can wrestle a sort of a, a bunch of different types of matches with with sort of relative ease in terms of that transition between them. Um, I mean, is that something that like do do you have like a, a match preference in terms of a a style or a kind like a, a gimmick that you prefer in terms of in ring? Not not particularly. No, like I. I uh, I guess sort of something that I will like you said I am quite good at adapting to mm. uh, different styles I'm quite an adaptable wrestler um, so, which is good because I like I enjoy doing different styles and like learning how to do them and learning if I like them or not um, and like yeah the, I had my first pure last uh, year mm. and it was alright it was alright I still have a bit to learn which uh, hopefully will be in time for the 29th but mm. um as far as a certain style that I prefer, not particularly. I, I quite I like the variety. I like being able to do as many as I possibly can. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's important, isn't it? I think that's important, especially again, like we mentioned, how I think especially since wrestling came back, you see a lot more variety now in shows and cards and in in a lot of promotions, not just the promotions 
you maybe expect the variety from promotions like Resurgence and stuff like that, where you expect yeah. a bit of variety. Yeah, like yeah. You, you see it in quite a lot of promotions now. That's uh, like that's the draw for promotions like Resurgence and like East and places like that. Mm. Um, like East has become one of my favourite promotions to work for because of its variety, mm. uh, not only in its uh, matches but in its booking. It's uh, of like talent. It's so varied. You'd have a you have a, a big name like Gene Money or whatever, but then you'll have a um, a lot of trainees from like Play Fight or whatever um, being on the undercard. So it's a real good mix for those guys to you know get out there and also to kind of like be part of the same locker room as more experienced people and pick their brains and watch their matches and have their matches watched. Mm. And like you said, Resurgence just putting on all wacky kind of you know matches as well, but also really dramatic pieces like. Um, like Crowley and Clementine that's just gone. Um, and having that kind of like um, uh, nod to the uh, theatre side of it. Mm. Um, and I think it's uh, those two promotions, just those two promotions, but there's definitely more, um, are a good example of like how much variety is now being put into the British wrestling scene rather than just mm. wrestling. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and as a wrestler as well, I imagine it's, do you think like for yourself and also other wrestlers, do you think that's, important like more important now so to sort of be open to that sort of changing your your style to match different varieties because there's so much different wrestling around i think so i think like the more i think the more strings to your boat right but mm. the more the more things you can do the more work you'll get and i think also um this year shows especially like um there's things like mythos um mm. mummy knows best which are like um theat- like uh, theater story told by wrestling and you know if people want to do that then there's an there's a uh, there's a pathway into mm. that kind of theater like a uh, stunt work a lot of people are getting into now because of wrestling uh, and vice versa so like there's i think being able to be varied and be able to do different styles and work in different ways not only helps you with your wrestling career but if you want different avenues outside it mm. that wrestling can assist then it's a really good thing to learn yeah, yeah, and you talk about adding strings to the bow. Something we talked about the last time we recorded this was Tommy Carl's Flight Club launching next year. Hopefully, all being well. Mm-hmm. Um, something we didn't mention last uh, last time that I'm, I'm keen to know is like, how did you coordinate that in terms of sending out your invites and like sort of asking people to get back to you? Because you mentioned there there were more invites sent out with people that didn't respond. Uh, so like, how long was that process of sort of doing all of that before that video came out? That video promo. About a month and a half. Right. Um, of, I knew people who I wanted to be in it, and then when I started to get a good look at, um, like who was in it already, I was like, okay, I kind of want to get, you know, uh, like a, um, a cameraman or an mm. editor. So I was like, so I asked Anne, the editor from um, up north, to be like, if you wanted to be in it. And I was like, oh, I should probably get a ref or two. So then I asked the ref, and then I started looking at being able, like, oh man, I've got way more like men and I have women I need to ask a few more women and um, so then I was asking women and then I was like oh okay and it just started spiraling out of control um, I was like okay I need to draw a line and just so I've got more or less all my bases is covered like um, like a good amount of different ethnicities and a good like different genders then that'll mm. be fine and then I kind of looked back and I was like okay I, I would like this person in uh, so I messaged them and I was like yeah cool I'll do it for you and I was like sweet and then I was like okay and then I look back and a week later and they're like, they haven't got it to me. It's like, I'm going to poke you one more time. Um, say if you want to be in it. And they're like, yo, I completely forgot. And I was like, okay, that person's just not going to do it. Mm, like, yeah. <laughs> they're either busy or they're just not, they're not wanting to do it. That's fine. Um, I asked, uh, what was it? I asked Mad Kurt to do it, um, to be in it. And he was, I think he was keen, but he just kept forgetting uh, or was busy because I saw him at Goods after I released it. And he just, as soon as he saw me walk through the door, he just went, uh, like, <laughs> he just remembered. I was like, can I, was like, can we film it today? I was like, mate, it's already out. Yeah. Uh, so whether he, whether he wanted to be in it or not, but it's his loss, he's not in it now. So. No, exactly. Well, to be honest, I mean, we had Kurt on the, uh, on the podcast a little while back, but again, I understand that pain because we were chasing him for ages trying to do that. And he kept saying like, oh yeah, I'll be on it. And then it kept like not happening. Uh, but we finally got in there. You've got to be persistent with Kurt. He's a busy man. He's a busy man. Mm. <laughs> But, um, I mean, that, that must have been really nice as well, like, in terms of, you know, aside from the people that, that maybe, you know, didn't get back to you, like, to have that many people actually get back to you and put their own time into into making those sort of little skits for you, that must be really nice, like, 
to know that you're sort of doing something right and also that like I guess you're like respected enough in the industry like within your fellow wrestlers that they're willing to take their time to do that for you I'd hope so um, yeah I, I, I didn't necessarily think of it as, as a respect thing although it's, it's a way to look at it I mm. suppose um, I mean if it goes the way I want it to go without um, divulging too much hopefully it will mean that the people that um did do it for me and helped and if they were wanting to it could involve a bit more work for them mm. in places if it goes uh the way i want it to go in the long run it is it is a bit of a long run thing mm. um which is great because then it creates more work for other people mm. um and there's already elements of that being um organized with certain promotions where it's like okay cool that person will get a payoff for helping me because you know that the, this promotion mm. has allowed me to do something without again without going too much into it um and so if we can just do that a bit more then it will give them something back as well rather than just being in a promo yeah yeah because i was going to ask because you, you mentioned the fact that like uh, last time we chatted that it's going to be sort of this on running thing at various promotions um, like you know potentially some like in ring stuff as well that that's going to be happening and I know you don't want to give too much away but I was going to ask if it, like it's the plan that those people that sort of got back to you if they want to are going to be involved in in whatever that segment is ideally yeah ideally like uh, there's no promises because obviously it's down to the promotion mm. uh, and I don't as much as I pitching the segment I don't have control over the booking mm. uh, so as much as I will try and get some of the people who have been in the fight club who said they wanted to be in mm. people like, like people who like Tate and uh, Jim Diehard who laughed at it and it's like you know fuck them they don't, they don't, they don't yeah they prove don't them wrong so it doesn't it doesn't matter about them <laughs> but the people who were more keen of it maybe like uh, Ian Skinner or whoever mm. um, uh, if I can find them some work maybe somewhere then I'll try my hardest um, but yeah it's like I say it depends on the promotions booking and mm. you know some of those promotions they'll have people that were in that program working for them anyway. So it might work fine. Mm. And others, it might take a little bit more of a, a bit more charm. Yeah, yeah. And those people like like Die Hard, like Spike, like Tate, who uh, who sort of sneered at it, they're gonna get what's coming to them, right? Surely, like they're gonna, they're gonna be like, they're gonna look at it and be like, oh, shit, I made a mistake there. Mm. Yeah, man, yeah, they will, they will. <laughs> but um, all in good time, you never know. Mm. Um, you never know what happened. They might change their mind. Yeah, you never know. You never know. And I know the last time I mentioned the fact that I was disappointed that this didn't actually involve you teaching people how to fly. I mean, you know, have you considered that at all? Is this an option? No, who's to say it's not? I haven't divulged that yet. That's true, actually. Yeah, it might be. It might. Be. I just like the idea of it. Just like loads of airport, like lo loads of wrestlers on an airport runway, and you're just teaching them how to fly in an actual plane. Just wouldn't end well, I don't think. Might have to be year two when our budget increases. Yeah, um, yeah, you need a bit more for that, right? Like a lottery win come in, and then you can be like, okay, right now we can just go all out with this. Yeah, but I'm sure we can find like a ramp and a, a side road outside a venue, and we can do the same thing on our on our year one budget. But... Yeah, yeah. It's a shame Christmas is coming up now. Actually, that's your thing for next year. You got to get them all on some sort of like Santa sleigh kind of thing. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I like, get Jim Diehard to do just be on a sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> And the future about the flyer. Jim Diehard as Santa. That would be the ultimate like turn, yeah, wouldn't it? From not even true. wanting to be in it at all to agreeing to be Santa is yeah, like screw screw rep pro and progress. Man. Like, that's the goal for twenty twenty three to get Jim Diehard as teaching him to do slay Santa. That's the goal. There we go. That, and if that happens, my word, what a year it will have been for British wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, we talked about Christmas last time. It is our Christmas episode. We'll get onto a bit of a bit of Christmas content. We'll mix things up a bit from what we talked about last time. Um, you've got your Christmas jumper on again, which I appreciate. Um, for anyone who didn't know last time, last time there were multiple Christmas jumpers put on at a time. Uh, we got one this time. Love that one. That's great. And just for this, um, because obviously you went all out, I uh, rummaged through my cupboard and I found the one piece of Christmas themed clothing that I have. Nice. Uh, and it's this... Family Guy, oh, drunk yeah. Peter and Brian T-shirt. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so I have that, and that's the only piece of Christmas-themed <laughs> dress that I have. Uh, I because be an idiot with their money, like me, and <laughs> every year. So it's all right. I waste my money on other things, mainly like we talked about last time, mainly Star Wars stuff, mainly Pop Funkos and books, and it's like that's, that's not a waste. oh, it's never a waste, but. 
admittedly, I don't know if you consider it a waste when I keep buying the stuff and I definitely don't have space for it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think we're all guilty of that. To be fair, like I've got a, I've got the you know the the big the big Lego Millennium Falcon, um, and, and it's still in its box because I know that I can't assemble it because I've got nowhere to put it once it's assembled. How how big is it when it's um, going to be built? Um, I don't know. It doesn't say, but the box is like hefty. Um, I don't know how many pieces it is, but the box is like like Lego shops and stuff like that is huge yeah the box is it, it's one of the bigger boxes so like it's going to be big and I'm like I have nowhere to put this so I can't build it yet because otherwise it's just going to be sitting on the floor <laughs> so it's not it's not ideal it's not ideal but again that's where my money goes so you know yeah. I think if you want to spend on Christmas jobs you spend it on what makes you happy right absolutely exactly yeah. exactly and we talked about Christmas a bit we mentioned the uh, the jumpers and we mentioned last time how like we're sort of a bit opposite in that way. You sort of quite get into the Christmas spirit, and I'm a bit more of a Grinch with it. I'm not, I'm not quite as Christmassy uh, as a lot of other people. Sure. Um, yeah. But I mean, we talked about sort of like favourite Christmas memories and things like that. We still got that feature coming out, so I'm going to ask you for it for it again in case you had any inspiration for uh, for any others. But just yeah, like your just like this sort of like quintessential Christmas moment that comes into your mind when when you think of Christmas. Any particular memory that stands out above the rest whether it be good or, or bad or weird or funny yeah it's, it's more i guess uh there's only really two like the, like generally christmas is just kind of like you know a nice time in general mm. so i can't remember it as a nice time but because you do the same th- traditions every year it, it nothing really stands out if those, unless those traditions go wrong or anything and you go oh yeah so, <laughs> or something really bad happens someone like uh at the turkey and like got the bone stuck in their throat or something. <laughs> Not, not that that's happened, but um, no, I guess like I suppose two off the top of my head was the lockdown one, um, where we couldn't go anywhere, mm. um, and me and my partner were just were stuck in. That turned out to be like a really nice, cozy Christmas. It was the first one in our new flat, mm. um, and that was really nice. Um, and then I suppose for like a, a more ecstatic young memory was, uh, which is what I told you I think last mm. time was the um, I think I remember when I was how, however old. One of the presents I got was the Thunderbirds Tracy Island. Thing. Yes. Yeah, we um, talked about that. <laughs> yeah, I remember being like uh, going mad for that, um, just because it was so cool. I was like, oh, look, it opens and it's got the three Thunderbirds in it. Mom, Dad. Mom. <laughs> uh, yeah, being, um, yeah, I think I played with that thing for way longer than it was meant to be played for. But yeah, uh, that's a, a weird one, a niche take. But mm. yeah, I, I, I strongly have that in my head. No, I get it. I get it. Because again, I think that we, we mentioned that I had it as well. But there are those gifts, aren't there? Like, And I think it's like those sort of quintessential gifts that everyone seemed to have at some point in their childhood. Like, especially when they're sort of around like mid 20s to mid 30s. Like, everyone seemed to have certain like toys that they got for Christmas. And like you just talk to someone about it, and they know exactly what it is because they yeah. had it as well. <laughs> it was a popular. I think it was quite a popular time, mm. um, at the time, which is uh, yeah, mad to think about now. <laughs> like, because I don't know if um, if kids are sort of into that kind of toy anymore. Mm. It's like, like I think they still are, but like it's you know when, when I teach kids and I ask like younger kids, mm. and I ask them sort of like what stuff they want. It's like a, it's all more like the gaming bits now. Yeah. Uh, like Minecraft, which I'm rather than actual physical toys. I'm sure they still mm. are, but um, compared to what it was back then, I think um, like the the age limit has sort of lowered. Do you know what I mean? I think those toys are still around, but the kids that like it are younger now than they were, like say when we were kids and like got them. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good point. Like you get like sort of maybe like five, six, seven year olds with it now, whereas like we get at like ten or eleven, you'd still be like, oh, this is cool as hell. Yeah. But like true. now that that bracket is lowered because there's so much more like entertainment around like choice wise yeah. that like yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah no I get that I get that um, well I mean we talked about like favourite Christmas things we talked about Christmas dinner essentially because that, that's that's where you sort of differ a lot isn't it because you said you go for steak rather than any sort of uh, Christmas bird as it were I um, just Turkey's a bit shit. Yeah. Um, I, I agree I, I agree that it tends to be a little like overrated especially at Christmas I, I feel like any food that you have to literally drown in a sauce to make good is not good, right? Surely if that's if you're drowning it in like gravy, which isn't, you know, I, I'm not opposed to gravy, but if you're drowning something in a sauce, uh, then surely the, the thing itself isn't that nice. And it's just, it's just really dry, and I'm just, uh, I'm not a massive fan. No, um, but the fact you say you're not opposed to gravy, we didn't speak about that last time, because that sounds like, like, because for me, gravy is like the the, the top thing that you need. Yeah, the elite. Um, so, like, do, do you not necessarily need that? 
Can you have yeah, it like? Not really, especially especially if I'm doing steak. Uh, if I'm doing steak, I, I don't do gravy at all. I'll just do steak with, I don't know, like uh, either peppercorn or like uh, a cheese or an egg or something mm. like that. And then like, uh, I think what we said the last time is like, most of the trimmings will be the same. Yeah, so, like, but you need the gravy on that. That's where you need the gravy, right? Mm, depends which ones I have, I guess. Because like if it's potatoes, not really too. Uh, I can do, but I, I don't know. I don't really. <laughs> I don't really like gravy touching my steak. Oh, I'm really picky. I'm really picky. This is uh, yeah. <laughs> like this, this is just why I'm not a fan of Christmas dinner because I'm so picky with it. Mm. Um, and I just literally, if someone just like give me a steak and I'll just sit in the corner and eat it on my own, <laughs> away from everyone. Uh, but yeah, just, I just, I'm very picky with it. And What's the one time? Yeah, and the same with roast. I don't really get roast either. Mm. Roast is kind of similar as well. I'm just not a roast fan. No, that's fair enough. And again, if you're not a roast fan, you're not going to be a Christmas dinner fan because that's what it is, right? Like, yeah, exactly. That's right. the thing. I feel like you may be more partial to like a a Thanksgiving one, like a traditional one where you've got like the meat, like normally they do like ham, don't they? Oh, they do turkey at Thanksgiving, they do ham at Christmas, but like Thanksgiving you get like mac and cheese and like mashed potato and stuff like that. That's, that sounds way up my street, yeah. I yeah. wish you did that more, more over here. Yeah. Uh, rather than America because I think they do it right. Um, Big old American feast. Yeah, yeah, mac, like mac and cheese and potatoes. That, like that sounds enough for me, yet alone whatever the main but yeah. meat would you Although- say is Ham is the main thing? Uh, no, I think they do. That, that's what's weird, I think, with America. I think they do ham at Christmas and turkey at Thanksgiving. Oh, man. Okay, yeah. It's weird, right? Like, I'm like, that's so, that's so odd to do ham at Christmas. No, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should try it. I'm not opposed to ham. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it's like, you know, a big joint. It's not like, you know, just a bunch of ham that you get from, like, the deli section. <laughs> it's like a proper joint yeah. of, like, ham, but, like... Mr. Bear ham. That yeah. Bear face, right? that, that should be it, though, right? That's what you want. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what you want to have at Christmas. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Love it. I mean, that's something I didn't ask you before, then. In that case, like, let's leave the meat aside. We're going just trimmings now. Sure. Because you've already surprised me now with this shock gravy revelation. So what are your, like... The three must-haves on the Christmas plate, like aside from whatever meat you choose, in terms of just the trimmings, what are like the three that need to be there for it to actually be like a good meal? Pigs and blankets for sure. Hmm. Um, I would say probably, uh, roast potatoes or some form of potato it could be mashed as well. Hmm. Um, some kind of potato on the side would be good. And then the third one, uh, hmm, that's tricky. It's probably got to be some form of veg, I suppose. Oh, no, you don't need to go veg. That's too healthy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, like, I, I'm not... I don't mind Yorkshire puds. Hmm. But I'm not as massive a fan of them as, as I'm such a, such a screw. <laughs> I mean, even myself come out. It's weird, out. yeah, it's weird. Like, you seem Christmassy in every other respect, but the dinner's just yeah. like... Yeah, no, no. <laughs> my, taste, my taste buds aren't as Christmassy as I am. <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, so I wouldn't say Yorkshire on that. I would, I don't know, am I missing any trimmings? Apart from, like, any... Uh, well, you could do, like, I, I, so this isn't, like, a trimming as such. I don't know if it's a trimming, like, it counts. But, like, my, my parents always do, like, cauliflower cheese with Christmas, but I don't know if that's a traditional Christmas yeah, no, I, thing. I've had cauliflower cheese with it. I quite, I don't mind the odd cauliflower cheese. I, I don't think I would ever eat it apart from Christmas dinner. I'm so weird, man, with my choices. <laughs> no, it's fine. I get it. I get it. I mean, something I didn't mention last time is, um, like, I totally get, like, even the state stuff because, so, like, my mum's Iranian. And so with Christmas, so with Christmas dinner, we always have an Iranian rice dish as well. That sounds sick. Like, it's like rice with cabbage and, like, lamb meatballs. That sounds amazing. But, like, we always have that on top of Christmas dinner. Like, you slather it in gravy as well. It's, like, it's any any Iranian who listens to this will think I'm a heathen for putting gravy on this dish. But, like, it's genuinely really good. <laughs> I, I'd rather, but it sounds I'd rather have that than turkey. It's, it, is, it is pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. Now, I, I'll, put, um, I'll put cauliflower cheese on there. Yeah. Cauliflower cheese or, like, broccoli as a, as a veg choice. Broccoli is uh, a strong veg choice. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not the third one I'm going to struggle with. So I'm, I'll mm. take your suggestion and go for the flower cheese on that one. Nice. Like it. Like it. Some good choices. You've redeemed yourself there with the. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I've tried. With the lacking of gravy and stuff like that. 
We won't mention that again. We won't mention that again. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that one could just be, uh, yeah, what I'm buried for. Well, we talked about last time, we talked about Christmas entertainment as well. We mentioned, like, movies and songs like that. Um, I want to ask sort of more in terms of sort of, like, mixing it up a bit in terms of just general entertainment. You mentioned sort of, like, you're, you're normally quite busy at Christmas going to different places. Um, but do you have those sort of things that you always watch at Christmas or always listen to at Christmas? Th- those ones that sort of keep it steady, you know, that, that's, that centre that is always the constant, I guess. I think, um, I guess, as far as listening goes, because I teach music, you, we start, li- you, you end up start hearing it pretty much the 1st of December, like, and start ending up teaching it, like, the, like the 5th, 6th of December, because we're teaching kids and they, in their last few weeks, and they just, they don't want to do any work anymore. Mm. So that you end up, and you <laughs> you don't want to do any work anymore. <laughs> so you just end up um, basically teaching them Christmas songs. So you're around Christmas um, music quite, probably more than the average person. Mm. Um, but like I've um, the past couple of years, what I like is it, not necessarily a tradition, but what I've started recently like to do is um, the Fallout um, soundtrack. The soundtrack from the Fallout mm. games is uh, it's very set in like fifties, sixties kind of era, right? Uh, and it's got a very nice sort of like Christmassy vibe to it. So I like to that's I like to listen to that when I'm either wrapping presents or mm. chilling out. Like I just feel that like that fits a Christmas tone quite a lot. Um, film wise uh, I don't think there's anything specifically that as a tradition that I watch I like just Christmas mm. films generally uh, I feel like at some point in the past few years we've definitely watched some of the Santa Claus films either all three of them or the odd one or two um, and then no that's to be fair there's, there's not really a tradition no a traditional film, I think. I'll watch, I'll watch anything that's Christmassy. Mm. Yeah. Anything that's Christmassy, if it's just, on. Just put a festive theme on it, and then, because we talked yeah, about it, didn't we? We talked about the, uh, the die-hard controversy. Oh um, yeah. And, like, I still, I still, I still don't know. I still, I'm not sure, like, in terms of... What... I, I would probably <laughs> say it is a Christmas film, but I can understand the argument of people who don't think it is. Like, can you argue that any film set at Christmas is a Christmas film? That's the point. Isn't mm. it? Yeah, that's the point. Like, if, it, if any part of time overlaps Christmas, just because it's you know, it's, it's yeah, if a film is year round and it goes through December, doesn't mean it's a Christmas film. Because I swear, there's films where um, I don't know, kind of kind of a mood, um, uh, a sad subject. But say it's like a film where, like, I'm trying to think of one, what it's called. The, the plot is quite a shared plot with the different films but say someone's got like their last year of their life to live mm. and it follows their, it follows their year um, oh right yeah, yeah and like that's not necessarily a Christmas film but they'll definitely stop off at Christmas mm. and then it's kind of like well that's definitely not considered a Christmas <laughs> film because it takes like maybe five to ten minutes of the movie yeah and, uh, but like you know it's just set there and then it goes into January and it's normal so but that's not considered a Christmas film Mm. But, uh, so I don't know it's a weird one but <laughs> I don't know so many people with Die Hard say that it is mm. just the sheer volume of people it's like well okay okay see this is the thing I've just considered so let me know because this has literally just popped into my head right because we mentioned that so we discussed last time that sort of like the, the plot for a Christmas film like to make it a Christmas film needs to be that like it needs to be the fact that even though it's at Christmas, the fact that it's Christmas is important to the film, right? Yeah, I'd say so. So, for me, Home Alone is not important, it's not a Christmas film, because parents could go on holiday at any point, right, and, like, um, and leave their child alone, and it could get burgled, because it's a rich family that people are like, oh, they're not here. Right. But Home Alone 2, the, um, who are the, the guys that steal the stuff? You know, the thieves from, like, the first yeah, one. I, I can't remember that. Um, m- yeah, Marty and someone. But, um, yeah. yeah, Joe Pesci. Let's call him Joe Pesci, because that's yeah, who it is. Okay. Joe, Joe Pesci and the other guy. Uh, <laughs> in New York, in the second one, they rob, like, the Christmas charity case, don't they, at the toy store? Yeah. And so that makes it a Christmas film, because they're robbing something Christmassy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with your argument. I agree with your argument. Yeah, it's just it's a conveniently timed robbery. Yeah, case. exactly. It's uh, just too convenient. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that redeems it in the in the, in the first film that can make it. Just, yeah, I don't think there is. Apart from its setting, because obviously mm. the setting is the main thing that makes it. But yeah, I don't think there really is anything in the plot that like that couldn't happen at any other time, could it? Mm. 
Yeah, I think the only thing in the plot that couldn't is uh, where he talks to the old guy, you know, that he thinks is really scary because he's watching his granddaughter sing carols. Yeah. And that's Christmassy. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. But I'm sure, like, it could be, like, they could have substituted out that, you know, for yeah. his granddaughter comes to visit. Yeah, exactly. And, like, looking out for it, he's making sure everything's <laughs> prepped so he's always outside, like, you know, and watching and make sure don't, you know, don't mess up my garden or don't mess up my because my granddaughter was coming or whatever. And they could have substituted that out, but... Yeah, it's a good point. I'm sure that other films like that, if you just took the setting out of it and ran the same plot, it would be a pretty yeah. mid movie. <laughs> but... <laughs> but there we go. There we go. I mean, let us know what you think, anyone watching. Let us know what you think about Christmas movies and what counts as a Christmas movie, because I'd be interested to know that. I'd be interested to know what the, the wider audience thinks. Um, we mentioned, though, as well, like, my Christmas movies are like Star Wars and Harry Potter because that's what I watch at Christmas. And so for me, that's a Christmas movie, even though they have nothing to do with Christmas at all. Um... And we sort of debated Star Wars a lot. I thought about what you said, because uh, last time I said to you that the sequels are better than the prequels. Uh, and that was a little controversial. Um, but I think you might be right having thought about it, because I, I just started watching the prequels again, like, last week, right. um, after we recorded. Um, but I think it's, like, the fact that stuff that we talked about, the extra stuff, like Clone Wars and stuff, makes the prequels better. Yeah, oh, like, I'm knowing sure. that. Yeah, and so that's what puts it above. Clone Wars and Rebels, uh, like for animated series, mm. um, helped Star Wars as a franchise like so unbelievably much. <laughs> like they're so they're so important um, for everything. And like I think if I if it was just uh, uh, so sequels, you mean as in like of course, uh, uh, yeah, Force Awakens by um, Rise and Last Jedi, yeah, yeah. Last Jedi and Rise. Um, yeah, because I would probably argue if without any of the Clone Wars story to, to boost the prequels. I still think Rise of Skywalker is terrible. Like I think, yeah, like just as a film, it's, it's that's clearly the worst Star Wars film. Like, yeah, yeah, ever. It's atrocious. Um, such a shame as well that it's like the the end mm. and it's so bad. Um, no, we don't talk about that. Six is the end always. There's, you don't talk about yeah. the sequels. Yeah, 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 yeah. In my in my mind, yeah. But in uh, well, I, well, I say in canon, they can they can make. A <laughs> Um, but like uh, as it stands now it's the end of I guess the uh, the Ray saga mm. uh, uh, I think Force Awakens is okay I just hate that it's such a reskin of a new hope yeah. it's such a reskin of a new hope um, like literally plot point for plot point it follows the exact uh, <laughs> watching it before even think, going back to the film when I watched it the first time in cinema I was like this is a new hope yeah. like, this, this is a new hope um, and I'm. I think it was you who said it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Last Jedi is way better than people give it mm. credit for. Um, I think Last Jedi is, a, is probably my favourite one of the three. Yeah. Uh, of the, those ones, uh, but because Last Jedi is good, Rise of Skywalker is the worst, and Force Awakens is okay, but it's a New Hope reason. Mm. I at least just prefer the originality. I think Phantom Menace is a really good film. And I won't hear it. I I will fight my put <laughs> my deathbed to say that's a good film. Attack of the Clones. Uh, yeah, yeah, is is not great. But the last twenty minutes of Attack of the Clones are the only thing worth watching. Yeah, there, there's some redeeming bits in it, but like a lot of it is a hard watch. Mm. Uh, and then it leads nicely into the Clone Wars, which I think should just be. It, it's you obviously can't watch it as a film; it's so long. But it's all of it is worth a watch. Yeah. Um, especially like season seven going into the end um, and then Revenge of the Sith I think is like top tier mm. oh yeah yeah Revenge of the Sith is great like that's yeah. like that and what do you count as like the uh, what about like the um, not the spin-offs because they're not spin-offs but like the standalone ones like Rogue oh, One and like Rogue, Solo Rogue One is Rogue One's top tier uh, Rogue, Rogue One is the best Star Wars film yeah we, I agree yeah. I think it's the best Star Wars film for sure um, Solo is Okay, I've watched it twice. I hated it the first time, mm. and then on the second time watching it, I was like, maybe I was being a bit too harsh. It's not mm. too bad. And then, am I missing one? No, there's only no. the TV shows left, isn't there? Like Kenobi yeah, yeah. and Andor and stuff like that. Yeah, I still need to finish Andor, but from what I've uh, what I've seen of it, really what are you in? What episode are you on? Uh, they've just escaped the prison. Oh, that that was a great episode. Yeah, that was awesome. That yeah, was Andy, Andy Circus and like leading the charge. Bro. Yeah, but I love. I love the whole ep- couple of episodes of um, um, them in the prison and just Andy Serkis being in it is yeah. like, so, so good. Yeah, yeah. It gets it gets really good at the end as well. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, those last few yeah. episodes are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's one of those ones, isn't it? It's a weird one with Star Wars because it took ages to get into anything interesting, really. Like, yeah, but like, you need weird. that build as well. It was a weird sell because I remember seeing the trailer and people being like, uh, oh, it looks really good. And I was like, oh, does it? Like, I don't know. Like, I think it's kind of like as as uh, fandom, we want to see something that we recognize. Mm. And, um, when we don't recognize any of it, I was like, <laughs> do I want to care when there's when there's no lightsabers or like <laughs> yeah yeah in it like um, but then like I kind of uh, I was doing some work and I just stuck it on in the background mm. and I was like I'm sure if I I'm sure if something will pick up it'll um, or sorry if something will take my interest I'll avert and start watching it mm. and I think it was like it was like looking up slightly in the first episode here and there and then I think it got to like near the end of the first episode and the, the laptop was down and I was like okay yeah I think I'm in mm. into it. yeah, so they, yeah. Did good, they did a good job in, in getting you in, um, by at least by the end of the first, because it does it does pick up slow, but then by the first, I was like, okay, um, I'm interested in some of these characters. Yeah, yeah, that's where my, uh, I think I had like this weird, like, you know that weird, like, oh, I know that actor moment. Yeah, and like, yeah. that was my favorite one of those ever, because Cassian's mum is Aunt Petunia in Harry Potter. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, there's a lot of actors in it, and the uh, yeah. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, uh, the older dude, uh, what's his name in the angle? The um, the the alliance guy, the one that brings him in. Yeah. No, I don't remember his name either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's like in everything, and he's such a good actor. Mm. Um, I like everything that he's in. Uh, like he's in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's in. Um, like the Thors, um, he's so good, such a good actor. Yeah. And like him being in it is really, really good. And it's yeah. like, why are you not in Star Wars before this? Like, like, you needed it earlier. Yeah, you would have, you would have fit so many good roles, but yeah, he's, he's obviously smashing the role that he's doing now. We speak about, we speak about movies like that. Actually, it brings me back to Christmas. Have you watched the new Home Alone, the one that came out last year, the remake? No, I didn't know there was one. Oh, yeah. It came out on, like, Netflix. It's like a Netflix original, I think. It came out last year. It's got, like, um, Rob Delaney and uh, Aisling B and Ellie Kemper in it. Um, oh. And it's uh, it's not good. It's really bad. God, you, you just made me think of it when you spoke about the fact that How Force Awakens is a rehash of New Hope. It's, is, it, uh, is it, like... Is it bad? So is it one of those films where it's like so bad that you can enjoy watching because it it's hilariously bad, or is it just a bad watch generally? No, I think it's more a bad watch. I think you can laugh at how bad it is. I'd recommend watching it because you can laugh at how bad it is, uh, but it's not so bad that it's funny. Oh, uh, okay, right. Yeah. yeah, that's not great. No, I like films like that. It's like, like films like The Pink Panther with Steve Martin is a film that I know is terrible. It's an awful film. Yeah, but yeah, it's just but really there's, funny. There's charm to it, right? Yeah, yeah there's, there's charm to how. But bad no, this is just a bad film. Oh, okay. it's, uh, but I'd still recommend watching it. It's like if you've got a couple of hours free, it's like it's still it's still worth a watch, but it's not I, great. I might stick it on in the background, uh, and then if I'm being like end up looking up and be like, what's going on? Yeah, it's uh, a it's a weird one. Like it sort of plot follows the same plot, but then there's these weird divergence in it that like are like what why why is this happening? <laughs> I, I don't know why they do like these weird films, man. Just like they're, they're perfectly good films, and they're like. Yeah, we should remake that. Like, We're in that era, aren't we? It seems like no one's making new films anymore. They're just remaking old films. And, and they're never good. No. <laughs> it's really never going to be as good. good. That's the thing, is it? It's never going to be as good. No. Like, well, the, 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 the thing with the um, all the Disney ones, so like when they remade uh, Jungle Book and everything, like, oh, Yeah. Or how, like, the copyright on Pinocchio is out, and so we got, like, three Pinocchio films this year. Like, all yeah. from different places. And that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen any of them. I don't think I will watch any of them. But uh, I, one of them I, looks I, really creepy. I saw the um, Del Toro one. Yeah. That looks creepy as hell. Like, if, it's, if, it's, if it's done by Del Toro, I'm not surprised. <laughs> like, if I'm like a horror director and if, like directing a children's an, anime. Really yeah, good, it's, like, a, it's, a it's a little dark. Yeah. It's a little dark. But I mean, well, what, actually, you know, something else I was going to ask about Christmas wise is like you mentioned like all your teaching and stuff. Yeah. Like, do you teach Christmas songs like when it comes up to that time do you like and like when is it like do you teach like the the classics you know like the Silent Nights and things or are you going like Slade and things like that it depends on like um, the age and their likes and sort of their ability mm. uh, but like the younger ones like uh, you can do like you know Jingle Bells Frosty the Snowman all that kind of stuff um, Silent Night uh, for I guess teens that are a little bit more into their electric guitars then mm. yeah like uh if they've got the ability then you'll do uh don't let the bells end by the darkness nice uh, slade uh 
all the other bits. Uh, same with any of the drummers as well. If there's a, any drummers, we'll do Wham because Wham's actually a pretty decent drum song. Mm. Uh, everything else is pretty boring. But the drums <laughs> in it are uh, drums in it are quite good. Um, and then you know you get the Wham uh, Wham again in your students. Oh, I lost that early. I lost that so early. Yeah, I lost on December first, bro. Like <laughs> December first, I was like, "Well, get it out of the way." I didn't even lose it that early. I, well, actually, I did. I lost it on like the seventh, but I didn't even realize my partner's on the point now. We were in this shop, and she was like, "Isn't this wham?" And I was like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Yeah, damn it. Yeah, there's no way because you can't just un, you just don't automatically cut your hearing off. You you just perk up and be like to go, "Is that?" And then as soon as you've just gone, "Is that?" You've lost. Yeah. Yeah, once you know, isn't it? Once you've established that you know what the song is, yeah, then, then yeah. it's gone and it's all heartbreak. It's all heartbreak from there. Um, I just, I just end up playing it early because there's just no way you. I don't know anyone who's beat it. Like I just don't, I just don't know. Anyone I beat it last year or the year before. Yeah. What did you have to do with your life? Um, I know it was. It must have been the lockdown year, just because I wasn't going anywhere, and so I had no reason why I would accidentally listen to Wham. Oh, uh, okay. Did you not like? I guess there was was there any point where you stuck like a, uh, a Christmas playlist? Oh no! So yeah, I was smart about that. Whenever I put on a Christmas playlist, I'd start it with Wham, turn the sound down, and then skip it. Whoa! Just you were that keen. Not yeah, to yeah. It. I because I, it was the fact that I didn't realise I was really in it until like mid December, and I was like, oh, I've still not heard this. Yeah, and by that totally point, you're like exactly. determined then to beat it. <laughs> I guess if I got it through to halfway through December. I never get that far, but I feel like if I did, I'd be like, you know what? I'll actually give it a go. I'm not trying to hear it. So I, I get what you mean. Yeah, if I got to that point, I'd be like, right, let's give it a try. But if I was here so early, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, no like it's no point. It's over. It's over. <laughs> well, we're going going back to movies. I know we asked last time. I asked you about like if you're obviously you're the the maverick of British wrestling, and we spoke about that. Um, and we mentioned I, I mentioned to you like you know if you're maverick, who's goose? And you said there could be plenty. But I'm going to ask you to, to cast the film now, not fully. Like let's say like the like the four main characters. Obviously, you're Tom Cruise. Sure. Uh, you're yeah, Top yeah. Gun. Uh, yeah, but I like Goose, I think Goose, Iceman, and uh, Charlie. Charlie, that's it. Charlie, that's it. Okay, so let, let's go those three. Obviously, you're you're Top Gun. You're Tom Cruise. But in British wrestling, you've got to cast those other three characters. Who would you pick for the the uh, the Brit Rest remake of Top Gun? <laughs> I'm going through all the character arcs now, trying to, trying to see who and trying to see who relates to the thing the most. They're all, they're all just jocks, really, aren't they? Like they're all just flying jocks. Um, then Goose is just a little bit dimmer than the others, but then Iceman's the rival. I'll go. I'll go smashing Mike as Iceman. Nice. Because I think he's he's more of the rival side. Uh, but still, it is like you know, like the competitive. Yeah. Um, uh, Crowley as Goose. Nice, yeah, that's a good cast choice. I like that. Crowley as Goose. Is Crowley as Goose with the top hat though, right? Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Penny says Charlie's difficult. I've just gone a random limb with just a, a, a woman wrestling, just someone that I don't even really know. Uh, because I, I honestly, like, I'm trying to. There's no one that I know that's like um, mm. Penny. No, I was about to say Clementine, but she's the furthest. From <laughs> Yeah, so she's the furthest from um, I'll go Sky Smithson. Oh yeah, that's a great choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's badass, isn't she? Yeah, she's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I like this. Someone's got to make this. This has got to be yeah. made. Crowley smashing like and Sky Smithson. People deserve to see it. God, it sounds like an absolute plane crash, but. It sounds fun. It sounds fun. It's, that would be great. I think that would be absolutely great. There's plenty of like wrestlers in there on the scene who have like filming and TV experience. We could easily get this done. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Basic I'll, budget. Uh, I'll, I'll pitch it to a uh, to some producers and be like, right, I've got this great idea. Yeah. You'll, you'll hate it, but we'll love it. That's oh, I tell you what, this is something that no one's done yet in wrestling, and I don't know why no one's done now that we're on this. Why has no wrestling promotion put on like a Christmas panto? 
good. Like uh, you could do like you could even do like a film or something as it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be like the the you know the Jesus story. It could be like any other film or something. But like that, but with wrestlers for like a show the week before Christmas, that I'm would gonna, sell out. I, that I'm would gonna, sell out. I'm gonna try and do that somewhere next year. That's Anyone exactly watching this? Who'd be good, good for that? Rest, Wrestle Island or Resurgence? They seem like the sort yeah. of places that would put that on. East would be good, uh, good if they still ran. Yeah. Uh, well, if they run in twenty twenty three, yeah. Any, and any, uh, any of the variety ones. Resurgence would be dope. Yeah. Uh, um, the Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll get. I'll get to work. You can add. You can add a bit of fighting in there. There can be a bits of fighting oh, yeah, at certain places. It would it'll, it'll definitely be told with wrestling. Yeah. Uh, can you just imagine, <laughs> imagine like the three wise men is like a shield faction or. Uh, <laughs> S faction. I don't know. There's a, a group of three. I don't know. Um, it's like Lycos Gym. Like, yes, Lycos Gym is the three ones. <laughs> um, someone, a cute baby Jesus. Uh, I don't know. Like we have. Uh, who's, a, who's a couple to do Mary and Joseph? Uh, there's know? loads of couples. Uh, Brady and Ivy. Oh, I was thinking Brady and Ivy straight off. They'd be hilarious as it. Or Alexis and JJ. Alexis, JJ, Krem, uh, Krem, Clem, Crowley. Uh, yeah, there'd be quite a few good ones. Oh, no, I tell you who'd be a... Oh, as, as like, as Joseph and Mary, you know who'd be a great Mary is uh, Amira and Oku. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that would be good. I mean, yeah, Amira and Oku would be fun. Uh, who would be Baby Jesus? Um, uh, uh, oh, it's got uh, Jack, uh, Jack Nansen. Screw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, he's small. He's small and baby looking. <laughs> Or Nino. Jack Nuts is not Nino. There we go. And then who's who's the bad guy? It's uh what's his name? King who's his face? Herod. Yeah, King Herod. That's uh who's who's King Herod? Who's the one that wants who wants Jesus gone? Who's gonna gonna be? Uh I just think Jim Diehard again. <laughs> Jim Diehard is always No, Diehard when you've turned him into Santa is the one you want like flying across at the end, yeah, like through the I sky. Just, I, I cast Jim Diehard as like literally I just think he'd be hilarious <laughs> as everyone Spike Spike is oh Spike would be good as King Herod Spike's the one that doesn't want anyone to, to take his, his light right his, his spotlight yeah and I think also Spike in genuinely just playing King Herod and Nativity yeah. which is so funny um, yeah oh, we, we gotta do this thing? now uh, yeah I was about to say after Flight after Flight Club I'm putting together a next, next year we've gotta get this done it's, again, it's one of those things that I think, like, I think now, again, going back to what we were saying with, like, wrestling being so... Mm. We are now only starting to really think of, like, oh, the variety and the, the stupidity of wrestling now. Because we had the boom of wrestling, where mm. it was, like, activists, like, wrestling, and then over the uh, pandemic and coming back, everyone's, like, mega creative with stuff now. Yeah. With promotions that would just want to run wacky stuff. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, maybe, maybe it's just never come up, but... By 2023 end, we will definitely... We'll have the Christmas pano. Anyone watching, yeah. prepare yourself for that. Save up for that now. Like, save save at least, like, 20 or 30 quid aside to make sure you're going to have a ticket for that because that'll be... That's the show to watch next year. Yeah. Bring your uh, gold frankincense and myrrh, which, to be fair, in a wrestling context, is probably going to be deep heat, wrist tape, and... Uh, I don't know, merch. Yes, <laughs> merch, yeah, merch. Yeah, bring, your, bring your merch, merch, and merch. <laughs> love it love it well uh, we're coming to the sort of like close to the end now like, as we mentioned last time we recorded this you did our anatomy of a pro wrestler so we're not going to do that again because you've already done it um, and that would be a bit that would be a bit boring for you unfortunately our viewers won't get to see it but we're going to sort of push that aside I think for next year we've got uh, you'll be the first to try our, our new feature okay. um, which is something that's sort of like a work in progress so you can let me know how you how you find it um, and instead of revealing a bit more about you, like Anatomy of a Pro Wrestler does, this feature is going to see you revealing a bit more about your fellow wrestlers. Because this working title for this feature is called Dishing the Dirt. And okay. so I'm going to ask you some, some, some questions and you let me know which of your fellow wrestlers, from any promotion, it doesn't matter which, spring to mind. Okay, hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble for this. No, it won't be anything that gets anyone in too much trouble. We're not going to be like, who do you really hate? <laughs> oh, okay. It's not going to be stuff like that. Uh, so the first one is uh, who's always the first to arrive. Uh, I'll, I'll spring a uh, I'll spring a, a slightly un, a newer name um, into it. He's he's one of my students who's just kind of started wrestling this year. Um, called Tony Sin. Okay. Uh, he's um, yeah he's sort of taking his first footsteps into wrestling, but he's the most punctual person I think I've ever met. Like oh like overly so. Uh, he picked me up once at like quarter past six in the morning. 
or to get to a sh- to get to a show for before the ring was there. And I was like, I was like, do we need do we need to be there before the ring's there? And he was like, yes. What if it's early? And I'm like, then it's early. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's probably the, the first one there, definitely. Nice, nice. Well, the opposite end of the spectrum to that one is uh, who's always the last to leave. Probably wrestling memes, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, he's always like yeah, he's usually like very, very chatty or or because he does he does so many like uh, cameras. Mm. Like, he, supply, he supplies so many like ca- cameras and things for like promotions. He's usually running around trying to find them <laughs> um, as well. And then he and then by that time he's trying to say like goodbye to everyone. So yeah, I'd probably put wrestling memes there. I reckon. Nice, nice. Who's the comedian of the locker room? See, I'm trying to think of the people who are, I like, guess. So now, now this splits it into two. This is either mm. people who are like just generally kind of like ha ha funny. <laughs> Uh, or people who are hilarious without meaning. Me. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And then, but no, but I'm trying to think of that as well. Put that into character. I'll go with Gene. Yeah, um, yeah. I think Gene's more of a ha ha. Mm. Um, but he's always very entertaining in the locker room. Oh yeah, I mean he's entertaining out of the locker room as well. So. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He That's just he's just born entertainer. Yeah, he's usually filming some kind of skit for something. So he's usually uh, so he's usually like yelling or and in his pants. Mm. Uh, so. I'll, I'll put Gene on there for, but there's but a lot of people are very funny in the locker room. So nice, nice. Her name for that that um, scenario. Yeah. Now this is a tricky one because I'm not going to talk in the ring. I, I'm not. I'm not going to talk in a fight scenario. But this is also a tricky one considering the fact you're all wrestlers. I'm talking out the ring when it comes to say if you're like gaming or something like that, like something similar. Because who's the most competitive? Me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. easy. Um, yeah. No, I I don't want to be. Uh, not necessarily the, I don't want to be the best at anything I don't want to be the worst at anything right. so uh, I'll make sure that I'm actively not at least don't suck so to not suck you need to not lose mm. so um, yeah I would probably genuinely put me and that's not even like a like a brag like I'm very competitive in everything nice um, in like literally everything like if it's something to the degree of being like you know, oh, you got the snow of your car in, in a minute. I got it off in 45 seconds. Yeah. Like, something like that. Um, really weird example. But yeah, yeah. I probably put me. Nice, nice. Uh, next one is, who takes the longest to get ready? Uh, <laughs> um, maybe Clarence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe Sassy Bear. I think he, may, he might take a while. Uh, he starts really early. Like I think he's usually done by the time like I think he goes up, but I think because he starts putting everything on really early. I can't think of anyone else at the top of my head, so I'll stick with Sassy Bear Clarence. Nice, nice. Uh, who brings the best like lunch or snacks? Who brings the best food? Uh, I, Kieran Lacey has really good food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I remember being at a show and he had like it was, I think it was like a meal. It was a meal prep, but it was like the most because meal prep usually looks really bland mm. and horrible, but. It had. It just looked so good. It like looked, looked like a, like the middle of a three course meal, meal in, in like a Tupperware. Nice. It was just like meal prep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll put Kieran Lacey for that one example. Nice, nice. This is gonna be. This is gonna be the one that will get you the heat potentially. Who has the worst dress sense? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say. Sorry, memes. I'm gonna say memes only because, uh, only because he always wears the shows the, the this like Cobra Kai. I don't know if they're pajamas or like joggers. They're or they're always like a Cobra. He wears this to every show without fail, like these Cobra Kai joggers, which are like black and yellow, and like. It's all right. I think if you were doing like a fancy dress, I don't know if they were like a once uh, gear that he used for like a fancy dress show, or anything else but he always wears them and just he wears like an all shirt and just these really like yellow and black tight pajamas joggers i don't know what they are uh, with like all these badges on and just your eyes just go always straight to them and being like what are you wearing like and it's never like the first time it's like oh it's cobra kai okay and <laughs> i didn't want to say that because i think he really likes them but um sorry memes I oh memes we apologize whose ring gear do you wish you had Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, whose ring gear do I wish I had? Um, Nico's. Mm. Nico's is it? Well, Nico's jacket for sure. Yeah. Nico's jacket is sick. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah, it comes with a full ensemble. If you say it, then you get like the jacket and you get the blade as well. Like you get everything. Oh, like. oh yeah, then yeah, Nikos. <laughs> uh, and then I, yeah, I'll say Nikos, and then I guess. Uh, I'm just going through people's gear. I feel like as well, if you can get, uh, if you can get like a male version or like a tights version or trunks of like Alexis Falcon's singlet. Oh yeah. Like the design on her singlets, like the, her new ones really, mm. really cool. Uh, I was going to say, you're not going to just wear the singlet, like... I mean, I can, but people aren't going to want to see that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, she pulls it off better than I, I would, I think. I don't, don't know why. But, um, but, yeah, no, I think the way that she's done the, um, the like, the colours intersecting and, like, the actual patterns and the design, like, I think that would look really good on tights, too. Mm. Um, maybe not necessarily for my character, but just on, like, generally on tights. For yeah. It looks sick as well. No. I'll, I'll evenly say, uh, even though I know he does it for the sake of it, Mad Kurt. As well. yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he does. He does it because he knows it's bad. What are you see it? He doesn't. He, no, he wears that stuff because he loves it. Really. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pretty well. Uh, this one won't be a running a running question in the future, but as it's Christmas, who would you be most confident buying a secret Santa gift for? Oh man. Uh, well, I mean. <laughs> You mean you mean them liking it? Yeah, yeah. Like, who would you yeah, be like? Oh, I know exactly what to get them. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I was about to say it was just them not liking it. I'd be like anyone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if they got to like it, that's harder. Uh, they can like not like it, but in a funny way. You know what I mean? It can be like a gag one that like you get for that person because it's shit, but you know that they'll get why it's shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, uh, Crowley would be pretty easy because mm. any kind of lasagna that would work. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, any any kind of lasagna, but that's but it's that's quite commonly known. No, yeah, he love he loves it, doesn't he? He eats yeah. it with his hands. It's ridiculous. I'm trying to think of something a little bit more interesting. Um, <laughs> I think that's interesting, though. To be fair, I think if you got someone a secret Santa and they opened it and it was like a ready meal lasagna, <laughs> uh, he would gen- he would love that. He would love it. Um, but I think it'd be more interesting than me giving it. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, yeah, we'll keep with that. We'll go with Crowley and Alessania. Nice, nice. Uh, next one is, um, who would you want by your side in a zombie apocalypse? Hmm. Maybe Danny Black. Yeah? He, uh, he, he's got, like, quite a lot of, uh, sort of, like, zombie-fied ideas. Like, he's, I've always seen him with, like, zombie, like, uh, promo shots or, like, zombie-esque merch. So I could think he's got, like, a good knowledge of them, maybe deep down. Maybe he's got a good knowledge of them. Nice, um, yeah. Jim Diehard, for obvious reasons. Because... <laughs> uh, because he's Santa. He's my go-to, yeah. Um, uh, and then maybe just Dan Maloney, because just <laughs> Dan Maloney will just kick the shit out of it. Da- Dan Maloney would just take on like 500 at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put those three as a, as a very... Nice, nice. Uh, and then the final one is, uh, who would you trust, or who would you trust to host, or like throw you the best surprise party? Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a surprise if you knew about it, but you know. Yeah, 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 you're fine. Um, uh, Mambo. Yeah? Yeah, Mambo. Yeah, yeah, um, I imagine he'd host a good one. Yeah, I think Mambo would be, would be, would be, would be do well. Nice. Uh, I don't know, I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't, I don't think, I, we know each other, but I wouldn't say, like, you know, we're, we're uh, best mates, but I don't know, I just think he would treat everyone the same with, like, a good surprise. It yeah. Just, you'd go all out and, it would, you know, you'd put all the effort in. I go Nice, love it. Some some great choices. Some great. Not too much dirt dish. See, it was all mainly positive. Yeah, it, yeah. There was. I mean, memes will be heartbroken about the clothing one, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, that, that one was the worst. But like, it's hard, man. Because like, yeah, like you say, it's subjective. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm sure people look at my dress sense and be like, "What the hell am I wearing?" But I don't know, like, there's no there's no one that really dresses like what the like what the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. It, sort of looks relatively normal so I had to really <laughs> think outside of the box and I was like because even memes looks pretty you mm. know it's not too out there it's just the one thing that catches your eye but god damn it yeah <laughs> well really actually marry someone there. some good choices some good choices I like it I like it well Tommy Carl thank you so much for joining us on the Grapple Theory podcast for our Christmas special 
um, again. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having you back. I'm so glad you you agreed to come back. I know that yeah, it was a it was a long chat the first time. We've done it all over again, so I really appreciate your time. Um, but hopefully, people have enjoyed it, and um, we got a couple of a sort of like final thoughts from you. Um, the first one is going to be we've talked about Christmas. It's our Christmas episode, of course. So if you if people are watching this and they need something to do over Christmas with their family, and you're going to suggest to them one film one quintessential song and one quintessential sort of christmas family board game to play what are they what are they going to be who what would you recommend for people to do this christmas film song board game um not necessarily board game but go for cards against humanity because that's always fun yeah um, i think cards against humanity is one of the best ones which will uh, make and break friendships <laughs> and families um uh film uh, if you haven't seen it and it's only 45 minutes or so is watch the Guardians Christmas special Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special nice I didn't know that was a thing I might have to watch that yeah it's on Disney Plus it's only for, it's only 45 minutes and 50 minutes but it's like a real charming little 50 minute skit um, it's nothing really too marvelly to be fair it's just the, the characters in it in a Christmas story and they get Kevin Bacon in it um, <laughs> and that's quite fun nice and then uh, a song um It's got to be you know, got, oh, yeah. We'll go with the Christmas song. I'll just I'll say "Don't Let the Bells End" by The Darkness because nice. I, I feel like that one never gets enough credit. That's yeah, it doesn't. Crazy. It's very underrated. It is a good Christmas yeah. song. Nice. It's a wicked Christmas song. Love it, love it. Well, Tommy, thanks so much. Um, we end the show, of course, like we do, like we did last time, like we do every single podcast, uh, by asking you, you know, you've got the whole year ahead of us now, 2023. We've got plenty of ideas, Panto, Flight Club, you've got, yes. there's so much going to be going on in 2023. Why, no matter where it is, whether it's, uh, you know, in the north or in the south, Resurgence or Good or anywhere else in the in the country or in the world if you travel you know i mean fingers crossed that'd be that'd be super cool as well um but wherever people see you uh why should people come and check out tommy kyle the maverick so in 2023 first off you'll be watching the new wrestle carnival pure champion come 29th so there's always that draw you'll get to see what the flight club's all about uh definitely in pro wrestling east i'll give you a slight exclusive so for wrestling east We'll be there, maybe at other places as well. But uh, you'll see what the flight club's about. The Christmas Panto, which is going to be starting being planned, definitely. And 10% will go to Grapple Theory. Um, <laughs> we'll make um, fun for that bit. And then, uh, yeah, no, I just, I plan to, um, to push myself more in 2023 because uh, I feel like I know a bit more how the game works now. Hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking to experiment a, a lot more, like you say, a lot of different avenues now. Uh, and going to get a bit creative and also just push myself to try and be on that top level so it'll be a fun ride so yeah come fly with me on that ride so to speak mm-hmm.